ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Uh, Today's a great day because I, I have my friend, I have my, my brother here, Shameek Moore. Ooh. Ooh. You Ooh. <laughs> What's yeah. up, man? I'm feeling like a ninja. I'm feeling swift. I'm feeling quiet. I'm feeling sneaky. You feel me? I'm about to take over the gang. Well, welcome to ADHD. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a big week. It's a big week for you because your movie came out. Yeah. Spider-Man. One. Not we number one. one. We're number one right now. You want to tell everyone what your movie's called? My movie's called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I play Miles Morales. You <sighs> get me? Yeah. Um, and I actually got to go to the premiere with you, man. What was it like, you know, just to start it off with, with a question, what was it like getting to see the culmination of all your hard work and all that time, like, actualized? You got to watch it in a theater with all your friends. You Post know? Malone was there. Like, like Ray Shremard was there. <laughs> it was crazy. No, yeah, it really was. And uh, you were there, you feel me? And, and friends, family were there. My agents and um, people I've met along the way in the industry. And I think a lot of people saw this and said, uh, they. I think we exceeded expectations. Definitely, man. Um, well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Because it is like it is num- like you said, it is number one. It is the biggest movie in the world, and the reviews are incredible. And you just got nominated for a Golden Globe. Bow, 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 bow. What does that feel like? Da, 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 da. Like Golden Globe boys now. Yo, you know, I can't wait to get my number one on the Billboard and music. You feel me? I Dude, can't see- wait to get my number one. On the music side, because it's it gotta feel the same way. Yeah, like I'm walking around feeling like yo. <laughs> well, it's crazy too because movie. because yeah, you have a number one movie, and literally two nights ago, like you're in LA and you're working, you're <laughs> shooting a music video yeah, yeah, for right. your single. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when like when do you find time to to just do like things for Shamik? Uh, that is doing things for Shamik right there, which you said. It doesn't feel like work, huh? Nah, this is me like. Music is self-expression. That's that's what that's what it is for me. That's me doing my own thing. Dancing. That's me being myself. Mm. You know, when I'm acting, I'm I'm playing a role, and I love to do it. You know what I mean? I love to show the world different sides of me, different characters. You know, tap into it. The good boy that loves '90s music in hip hop. You know, with the flat top, <clears throat> makes punk music. You know, uh, has to sell drugs. That story. You know, I gave y'all that. You know what I mean? 70s bad boy the original bad boy of hip-hop Shaolin fantastic the lady killing romantic I gave you that we're talking about dope and the get down in case you you didn't catch on you feel me and then I gave you Miles Morales you feel me the number one movie in America and now it's the music and now it's the music I'm coming through I'm directing I'm gonna show the world exactly what I learned so are you taking a lot of things, what you're learning on these film sets, and bringing it over to the music video, like when you walk on set like a couple nights ago? Yes, sir. You saw it yourself. I did. All right, so, all right, bro. So, <laughs> And, you know, we were talking outside a little bit before the mics cut on, and, and you were like, you, we, I don't know, the music video got brought up, and, um, and I was like, I waited to tell you this story because it's so, all right. So, like, <laughs> you know, you, you, you ran out like this dope spot. Uh, on Fairfax, right? It's like a restaurant that we've been to. Yes. Uh, it's called no, no Name? No Name, but it's real low-key. You know, everybody can't get in there. A lot of people don't know it's there. You feel me? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. The first time I went there, I think was with you. Yeah, you know. Um, and so you t- you texted me the address, and you're like, pull up. And I'm like, cool. And I'm driving home, and there's a bunch of traffic. Yeah. So like, by the time you said pull up, it had been like... An hour and a half. Now right? let's just tell all the story. I'd been told him to pull up, okay, and I said, guys? "Yeah, no, no, no." I said, "Yeah," and uh-huh. but listen, you told me to bring a suit. Yeah, bring a suit. Yeah, you told me to bring a suit. Yeah, you said you had the Prada. I did, but I had to get a dry clean, and you're like, "It's all good." There's a stylist there, so like while I'm driving, I'm trying to text you, and I'm like, "Hey, is there clothes there? Or like, should, like, what should I do? Because I, I I can't get the suit." And I was, I didn't want to roll up there looking all crazy. Yeah, I feel you. So you were like, "I bet." Here's what I thought happened. You texted me being like, "Yo." No worries, come through. I don't have my phone like that. No, yeah, I'm telling you, like, no, but up. I feel like you gave that to like someone was like, yo, text Travis that I don't have my phone and just to come here. No, I mean, no, I literally. Was, oh, you did. I okay. was directing, okay. and I was like, yo, like Maddie gave me the phone, and I was like, 
Got it. And okay. I gave it. I can you tell. Know yeah. So I was like, all right, I don't want to bug this fool anymore. I was no, like, I, I was like, pull up. Like we had the wardrobe. Everything was there. It was a movie, bro. So look. So look, okay, so I get there, right? And mind you, I, I no suit. Okay, I'm wearing like I'm wearing a hoodie, uh, like a cool hoodie, and like you know I'm wearing my my Ricks. I got my Ricks on. You know oh what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. I got some cool pants <laughs> on. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah! And so I hop out, and you know I'm just on Fairfax. So I open up the door, thinking like you know it's gonna be like a special spot in the in the in the in the, in the place that you guys are shooting at, and like you know there's normal business hours still going. <laughs> I open it up and all of the lights and there's like <laughs> there's 120 people that li- like literally if you could have just like halted a record scratch and be like. Like, and dude, it wasn't like no one was doing anything. Like, you had a makeup artist, like, touching you up. Like, there was guys, like, setting up, like, shots and shit. But as soon as I opened up that door, everyone's head went. And I just stood there, and I was like, oh, fuck. And I thought you guys were in the middle of a take because all the lights were on, and there was, like, a camera right. on the on the dolly and shit. Yeah. So I just I shut the door, bro, real fast. And I, like, start, I was like, oh, fuck. And I, I was, like, starting to walk around the building so I could go through the back. And this kid came out and was like, yo, come in here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. Because now it's even more awkward because I opened it already. And I, I started walking away. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I like literally walk in and like literally like, okay, every, everyone's just looking at me, man. And I'm like, oh, dope, dope, dope. And then there's this big dude with tattoos, right? Uh-huh. And he, like, you could tell he works there because he has like the fucking, you know, he has like the earpiece in and uh-huh. shit. He's like working. And he just looks at me like, can I fucking help you? Like, he's like, yo, can I help you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm here for Shamik. And he's like, oh, he's over there. And so I go walk up. You were like around five people, right? Uh-huh. Have you ever like see someone at like a party and you're like, yo, what's up, dog? And like you go up to like say hi and then like they walk past you and like say what's up to the person next to you or some nah. shit no okay it's it's the worst thing ever right that's what happened to you listen listen so what? i see you so i see you in the corner right and i'm like yo and like i walk up and i'm like yo what's up and then this girl just covers like she's like doing your makeup right so like you don't see me and then like this guy that was trying to show you something just looks at me like who are you and i was like okay i'm going this way and someone's like uh yo if you want to be out i was like where can i go to just be out of the way right because everyone had suits on there were like girls in like ball gowns and there was like a band like on stage and i was like where can i i look so out of fucking place and i didn't know what was going on so I was like where can i go to get out of <laughs> range crazy yo you definitely should have been like yo me like <laughs> you were working bro you were working i definitely were and i did not see you but uh <laughs> yeah so it was uh so look anyways I, I went upstairs uh i watched a bunch of it i got a phone call this 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 will conclude the story and this will just add to to you know the my i guess how fucking uncoordinated i am but um I, i'm upstairs and then it's so, like i'm chilling upstairs i'm trying to be low-key my fucking phone starts ringing <laughs> <I'm> like, oh <laughs> fuck <laughs> So like I go down like the little stairs and like I'm trying to like get out because it's like a call that I had to answer and like there's like a camera guy like setting up another camera and shit. Uh-huh. Yo, I like open up the door and I had like I had my bag and I had I had a jacket and as soon as I like, opened up the door there was another step and I fucking tripped and my bag went into the fucking alley in my jacket, what? dude. I literally <laughs> felt like the biggest dumbass. Ever like I don't mean to laugh. No, no, no. It's cool. It's cool. (laughs) I was so uncoordinated that day, and it just didn't work out. So I was like, I left emotionally scarred. I was like, wow. I just I I can't do anything right. Um, But I'm glad you had fun. (laughs) I was like, damn. Where's Trav? I was literally. I was like, where you didn't show up? And then you hit me. Oh no, I was up. Yeah, I was up top. I was like, damn. Yeah, bro. I mean, yeah, we was making a movie. We was making a movie. What's so dope too is like I called you. I called you today, and I was like, "What are you doing today?" You're like, "Oh, I'm, I'm like, you know, looking at all the footage. I'm like getting footage back so I can go edit it." Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're gonna edit this? Yeah, I'd be doing it, man. I'm how did you start? What I want to know is like, how did you start? Like, what got you first like involved in all of this? Um, were you a theater kid in school? No, I did do theater for one year. Um, I tried it out. I'm not really a theater kid. You grew up in Atlanta. Is there like a big? Is there like a big performing arts scene there? There is a performing arts scene there. Um, like the Cab Elementary School of the Arts and the Cab School of the Arts. Yeah. Um, and there's some other ones, but um, uh, no, nah, I went to the Cab Elementary School of the Arts for one year after I found out I could dance. And you how'd know, you find out you could dance? By watching the movie uh, You Got Served. 
Yeah, my dad took me to see that shit, and I was like. Like, I literally walked in with my pants on my belly button, and I walked out sagging. Like, sagging? Not for real, for real. Like, literally, like, that's what happened. I came out, and then I started dancing on the way to the car. And ever since then, you know, anybody that know me would say, like, I'd be, like, move. I'd start dancing all the time, you know? So, anyway. Did you ever think that dancing would lead you to act? It's crazy that you went to go see a movie, right, uh-huh. that inspired you to not start acting, to but start to start dancing. dancing. Yeah. And dancing led you to acting. Well, yeah, dancing led to being seen on TV. Like that's really what. When you're a dancer, you're 12 years old, and you know you just seen some movie shit. For one, you want to be you want to be on TV dancing, and for two, you want to be the best doing it too. Mm. You feel me? So I'm going to nightclubs. I, I heard about like some dance battle, some night dance battle, from uh, one of the girls in my like class, my dance class, and um, I was like 12. I went there. It was every last Friday of the month. I was like, yo, this sounds legit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody going to this nightclub at, you know, whatever time, of, you know, whatever time it was, um, maybe like nine or ten. You feel me? And my mom and dad actually took me. So I was like, because okay. you were twelve. Because I was twelve. <laughs> you were twelve. My mom and dad actually took me. And um, um, when I went there, I was like, I was ripping them. I was ripping them. I mean, like I, I started like getting respect just because I was, you know. I was I was a young boy like getting it, you feel me? Like for real. And from there I started taking dance classes and um, you know, meeting all the boys, C L Z back in Atlanta, that's the crew, you know. Um C L Z? C L Z. What does that Collision. stand for? Collision? Collision, yeah. Yo. How um, many times do you think you've seen you got served? Ooh, I literally don't. I would I would say it wouldn't be more than thirty to be honest with you. Okay, but, but at least thirty. But at least thirty. You feel me? At least. And so what was the first thing that got you on TV? The first thing that got me on TV was, oh, um, Cartoon Network. I was I did a commercial called The Pop Pop Toy. <laughs> For the Pop Pop Toy. The Pop Pop Toy? The Pop Pop Toy. Yeah, it was like a little square, like a little box, and you just press the buttons. So anyway, I was in front of a white... Um, in front of a white wall. You know them rooms that be white. And anyway, they put me in an orange jacket and a blue shirt can you I, find it on youtube mm, i haven't seen it oh yeah if anybody okay. has it post it i'm gonna tr- i'll try to put it in i'll try to put it in but. it's literally my first commercial ever if somebody finds that i want it and so you're in front of a white wall yeah and i just start like, you know what i'm saying i'm killing it they playing music and they use me and i just remember the dude that was shooting it um the director or the dp you know he was like yo you're very professional i was like what do you mean? Like, thank you. You know, I was like, you know, actually, like, that's a compliment. Yeah. You know? I'm like that. And uh, he was like, I mean, you're asking to see, like, where the camera is, and you're asking, like, so back at that, you said, where did it start? Like, you it know, had already started. That was the first time somebody complimented me because the first thing I did was, can I see it? You know what I mean? The first thing I did was, why is it, why are the lights like that? Like, you know, is that making. You were curious. You were I genuinely was curious. curious. Yeah, yeah, for real. And I started editing my own videos, home videos on iMovie. You feel me? I used to post them on YouTube. I used to make YouTube videos with uh, my friends. You feel me? I had a friend named Jacob. I still have, you know, he's out there doing his thing. His name's Jacob Lattimore. He's he's mad talented. Yeah, I know Jacob Lattimore. Yeah, and we we grew up together um, in ATL. You feel me? Making dance like videos at home, just dancing and shit, and. Uh, yeah, I was editing that from back then, and then I started like just continuing. Like I used to have a hundred dollars to make a music video. You know what I'm saying? That's how much I shot my first music video for. Word. Yeah, I had yeah, dude, and it was like my homie's brother shot videos, right? And he shot a video for Fabulous. Okay, this is in two thousand like ten. <laughs> this is a long time ago. And this fool, and he was like a legit director, right? Like he had just started directing videos. And yeah, he directed a video for Fabulous. And he hit me up and was like, yo, I got all this camera equipment left over if you want to shoot a music video. The only problem was I didn't have a song that I liked. Mm. I had a really shitty song that I didn't want to come out. But I had also never shot a music video. So I was like, what if I just shoot this video? You know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. And the hundred dollars was spent on liquor for the video. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, and uh, and literally, yeah, we shot it in two hours, and then that video ended up coming out and blowing up, Word. and like it, like it, it, 
it's a blessing and a curse because it started my career, but like also like haunted me. Where? You know, and it was like the you first and haunted you. Well, I'm saying it's like, you know, it's like your fucking fourth grade yearbook photo. Where do you know? Like, like, <laughs> let me let me ask you this, Shamik. You, I want to look at your fourth grade yearbook photo, and I want you to open it up, and then I want you to look at your fit that you got on. I and was if, in a uniform. Oh, you were. <laughs> Looking back on it, it's still a look, actually. The uniform <laughs> you wear now. You feel me? I'll throw it on now. Would still you? Look ah. the same <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not Had like I, haunting is the wrong word. I think it's just it's uh it's a little embarrassing for me. It's like you know, it's it's like looking at yourself when you're a little kid, you know. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, and so yeah, that my saying the hundred dollars thing. It's funny how many like, you know, how many music videos are made off of one hundred dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. I was. It wasn't even videos, you know, but it's like getting a camera and having your boys do it and help you out and like you know what I'm saying. It's really like. It's a home project. And that's what making movies is, yeah. to be honest. And then you just start working with professionals instead. You so you start I mean? doing these things on iMovie. What was the, f and you know, you got this, you got this Cartoon Network commercial. I got the Cartoon Network commercial. And then I got, um, and then the, after the Cartoon Network, oh, Teleperry's House of Pain. Then Read Between the Lines on BET. Then I did An Elf, an Elf on the Shelf, which is an animated something on cbs back then oh, so you've been doing anime animated stuff. i mean it was a it was a it was like two sentences it was it's a totally different thing well like, okay okay it's a totally different thing um and was that your first time but was that your first time in a recording studio in like a studio no nah, my dad no. makes like he literally builds recording studios like professional for real yeah oh damn so you've been around that your whole life yeah my dad yeah crazy so he always had a studio and like yeah, he plays music. He uh, he would travel with like Israel Vibration and like Peter Tosh and like the, those guys. You know what I mean? So do you have a crazy studio at the crib? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's is being built by him currently, like today, like right now. Oh, like right now? Yeah, but he already finished his at the house. Um, him and my mom got a new house. You feel me? I helped out. Did my little part. Love that. You feel me? And uh, yeah, he got the studio popping in his crib. He building mine, you know what I mean? We getting it together. Was there like artists and stuff that you were around when you were growing up that like you you know because your dad would be building like the studio or whatever that you get to like go and kind of hang out around? Um, I mean, really, I I just my dad and his friends. I I would never really. I was just kind of that was there. You, you were focused on your own shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. It was. I mean, that's like more culture. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I look at them like, like uh, like roots. Like you know what I mean? Let me ask you this: Would your passion for music be the same had your dad not been so into music and building studios and stuff? Yes, I wouldn't be the same person without my father. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be confident in myself the way I'm confident in myself. Knowingly, like I can be humble because I'm that confident. Mm -hmm. For real, you know. And it was a it was a acquired skill. You know what I'm saying? When I was growing up, everybody was like, he is too big at it. But people people couldn't even really see it right now. I don't think. Maybe you can. Dude, you're like the nicest guy I know. You're like, yeah, you yeah you're like so, my, yeah. Okay. Well, see, that's <laughs> you're good. Point. That's totally the point. <laughs> see, what's crazy is that no one in my family made music. No one in my family had tattoos. No one in my family made music. <laughs> like, every, like, you know what I mean? Everything was pretty, uh, I was, yeah, I was just looked at very crazy. But my parents were always supportive. Right. But yeah, once I like, yeah, they just didn't, they didn't get it, but they were supportive. Does I that see. make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That's interesting. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because like I didn't have, like, my, look, my grandpa gave me a guitar when I was five. So like, I got to thank him. I got to credit him. And my uncle was who put me on. My uncle was like, he was like, you know, tagging and running. Oh. He was, you know, and he's like, he's older than me. So like, he was the one, like, what, like a lot, like not a lot, but like, you know, 10 years. So like, he put me on to like Tupac and Biggie and okay. Bone Thugs and like all the R&B and shit that I, I listened to. I like that too. You know what I mean? Like, okay. so like, I got to thank him for like, like, I, cause dude, you know, when he would babysit me, bro, I was young listening to like Tupac. Same. You know, like, Not, like well, go ahead. yeah, and I'm, and you know, and then you know, it's like my mom's little brother. You know, that would just like, <laughs> yeah, like first time I drank beer with my uncle. <laughs> the first time I drank rum was with my uncle, Uncle Jeff, for real, in Jamaica, and I was probably like, 
I wasn't. I was young. I was probably like thirteen. Yeah, like 15, I was. Yeah, dude. Had a little taste. I didn't drink a lot. It was like a little taste with the first time. Dude, you don't got to It's this is the statue of limitations, man. It's like ten years. It's oh, it's yeah. a while ago. I told my mom, and she was like, "What?" I told grandpa, she was like, "What?" <laughs> Jeff, you're giving the boy rum. <laughs> you're giving the boy rum. Was it Jamaican rum? It was Jamaican rum. The rum punch. My Jamaican people know Aguan. The rum punch. What? I think the first thing I got drunk off of, it's the shittiest thing to, to admit, but it was like a 24 pack of Bud Light, a Budweiser. No, not Bud Light, Bud White. Like, you know, like the NASCAR, like fucking the red <laughs> and white, like the most like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <funny>, <laughs> like the most fucking NASCAR, like it's like the NASCAR of beers. The Budweiser. Um, yeah, and that was my first hangover ever. And what sucked is I had to go to breakfast with my grandpa and my step-grandma the morning after. And they knew I was hungover. Mm. Because when I went there, <laughs> and I was just fucking wrecked, and and I asked for orange juice. I was like, I just want orange juice. And my step-grandma, she was... <laughs> for, like, she was... Um, she's Dutch. She was uh -huh. Dutch, so she... She has like kind of an accent. So like there was like a little, like she didn't quite get it. And she tried to make a joke like, oh, ha, ha, like he must be hung over. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were oh, like, I was. <laughs> oh, I was. <laughs> oh, I was. And I didn't drink for a long time after that because I fucking hated that. I was like, I do know. I was puking. It was awful. What? You didn't get like that. No. Yeah, you're good. No, I had a little taste. I don't even, you know, I just knew I didn't like what it tastes like. And it was it. And yeah. now you like rosé. Oh, I love Rosé. You know, on my first podcast here, I had this dude, Gary Vaynerchuk, and um, he just launched this new this new wine and Rosé company called Empathy Wines. Okay. And I told him, I was like, yo, you need to talk to my boy Shamik <laughs> because this fool loves Rosé. It better be good. Hey, I'm I have, you know, I ordered, rose. I ordered a three month supply of it, um, but All I haven't right. gotten it yet. So I'll, I'll, okay, I'll hook yeah. you up when, when it comes to my crib. Right, I'm going to check it out for sure. I like, uh, you know, in case anybody's curious, Lacoste. I, need, I like a, a Corsican rosé. Corsican. Yeah, Corsican Is that rose. what we found at, at the restaurant we frequent? No, that's a, a Lacoste rosé. Lacoste, okay. Yeah. And you like a... a we, well, you know, we can't put everybody on to Yeah, the we sauce, can't. Okay, you know okay, saying? okay. We, we you got to become friends with us. Yeah. You, you, can, you know, <laughs> <laughs> shit ain't free. <laughs> <laughs> shit ain't free. You know what I'm saying? But there's a nice list. There's a there's great... I tried one yesterday that was... Ooh. You know what I'm saying? You've been in LA for a while. Yeah, I've been here for like a few weeks prepping this video. You feel me? And where you you're going back home for the holidays? I'm going home for the holidays, leaving in the morning. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited to get back in my Porsche, my Porsche. You feel me? I'm excited to get back to my house and keep building, renovating. You know, I'm just excited to get back to life. How many times have you seen Spider Man now? I've seen him. I've seen him five times total. Are but you gonna go see it when you go when you get back home too? Definitely. I'm 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 the type of person to like continue to watch my work until I'm tired of it, like for real. <laughs> to be honest with you, I watched dope so many times, like just like how you listen to your own music when you make it for sure. Like, but yeah, that's how I like to really get like what I like and don't like clear, mm. and then I'm gonna do better next time. Yo, the first thing I saw you in was the get down. And I was such a big, yo, I, and you know what's crazy is I have a photo uh, of me on the carpet at the 2016 VMAs. Where? And you and yeah, me you walked, me I told you this, <laughs> but I, I like, liked the show so much, I like, Where? I didn't want to cut, you were wearing the sickest jacket, you had this like super yeah, dope jacket. And, um, yeah. and yeah, I was like, oh fuck, oh shit, <laughs> what's up bro? Uh, Where? You know what's crazy though is I met Kanye that night. Me too. Yeah. But my boy that was with me, <sighs> I what love happened? him though. Bro, it was me and Jay in backstage, and uh, we was about to go present. I mean, me and Jay, we was we was like, and I brought my boy from Atlanta and Coz, and it's I mean it's cool ultimately, but it's just we was backstage with Kanye and Kim, and it was just us four, and you know my homie took the the opportunity and just he did some extra some extra. Ask for extra. a picture. I mean, he didn't just ask. Bro, slid up next to him. It's like beam. <laughs> What's up, Kanye? Oh no! <laughs> oh! He was like, "What did you do?" Well, I looked at. Wait, no, hold on. What did Kanye do? I mean, he actually just leaned over. the The ironic thing is, the person that did that, my boy, 
Kanye, I'm sure I'm positive if Kanye knew the type of talent that this dude has, but he would he would ask him for a picture. No, no, I mean I don't know about asking for a picture, but like he would definitely be like, so yo yo come to the studio, like. But my bro, he wasn't thinking. Like he was, you was already in the room. I, it's just you know you just gotta teach people sometimes. Just just do action. You know what I'm saying? The the key is not to make anybody feel like belittle or like you know he was out with his. With, I'm the little bro to him. You feel me? I grew up with him being big bro. He just like I put him in a situation he never been in before, and I real life noticed like you know I can't like assume everybody's like of me. Course. You feel me? Yeah. Um, but but I, I get it. I yeah. do get it because I get like that about like people I really look up to. You feel me? Oh, I got a story that's bro. I I have a song with Ti. Okay, so we did this record in 2015. It's called Young and Stupid. Hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yo when we went to go shoot the video my homie Davis I love him to death I've known him since I was 14 same thing he's the big bro you know he's, he's older than me he's he, you know best friends right like he took me to my first high school parties all that shit okay <laughs> I brought him into this shit right I bring him into this music shit right so he's like he's you know assisting and um, this is like the first year that he's been an assistant, okay? You've gone to dinner with him. You know him. Oh, word. My homie Davis, <laughs> okay? Like, we're still friends, disclaimer, word. okay? Word, like, word. Same. So, uh, <laughs> so, we, so we're on set, and, um, and uh, before T.I. gets there, I'm like, yo, like, you know, make sure when he gets here, like, everything's cool. If he wants food, order him food, da, 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 da. Like, make sure the wardrobe's right, da, da, da. Bro, T.I. gets here, he gets to the studio, I'm like, oh, what's up, Tip? Da, 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 da. You know, vibes good. Comes with a bunch of people. David Davis comes up and goes, uh, "Hey, got your dressing room ready for you, bud." <laughs> <laughs> he called him Bud. You don't call Tip Bud. I mean, bro. I'm the type of dude to be like. I mean, what? I mean, bro. No, maybe I okay. I guess if I was like, "Hey, bud, we're friends. Like, we can do that." What? But if some dude walked in here and was like, "Hey, bud, uh, can you?" Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't really take it personally. To keep it OG. It just got mad awkward for a second, and no, like, I feel it, you. it got. I, it, 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 and you know what? It was definitely more awkward for Davis because, like, I, I like, I was like, "Oh fuck!" And like, I was kind of waiting to see how Ti responded, what? and he was totally cool. He was totally cool, like what? nothing. And then Davis came like over me, and he's like, "Dude, I'm such a fucking idiot." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> no, yeah. I, I mean, if 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 uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if if you know, it was like, "Oh fuck, I just got damn messed up with Ti because he got damn whoop de whoop." I didn't, you know, it's it's one thing, but I don't know. I looked at Ti, I was like, "What's good?" Like if I said "bud," I you know, and he felt the type of way, I wouldn't. Like the fact that he felt no type of way, I'd be like, "Damn, I'm offended him." But at the end of the day, like it's my, it's how I'm talking. Like, I mean, look, the video shit went great. I'm present too, you feel me? I'm here. This is the type of person I am. You know what I'm saying? I am Miles Morales. I am Shamik Moore. <laughs> no, I'm I'm having fun. I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm chill. I'm in LA right now. I don't even know. We just chopping it up. I'm just chilling. Is it weird seeing like comics and like dolls and like a bunch like cl like all that shit with you on it? I mean, I haven't seen my face on it. You know, no, but, but I know. Come on, bro. It's cool that I'm involved with the with the you know something that you were like you know that you yeah, had such a big hand in. Almost definitely, man. I'm, I'm, it's like every night that I'm laying in bed watching TV and like the the commercial comes on. I just <laughs> hey, my name is Miles Morales. Oh, shoot. I don't even watch TV. I don't even know how much it's playing, but I a heard lot. that it's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Say a yeah. lot. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So shout out to, you know, the story behind this ring. <laughs> you feel me? What is the story behind the ring? Oh, we can't even get into it. Oh, we you can't. Okay. You, you know the story already, but we can't even get into it. You know? we, don't, we don't need to yeah. do the pod. <laughs> you know what's tight, too, is that they got the Jordans that came out. Oh, where? The they sold Jordans. out. Yeah. Yeah, I was like the Jordans, duh, the Jordans you was wearing. Shout out to Jordan, but that's cult, bro. That's like you know, like a, okay, like a movie, like that's a, you know, but like there's so there's like a whole world, a whole universe that goes with this thing. You know what I mean? Or, that's insane. Nah, yeah, man, I'm excited to just continue to make more art. I'm excited to continue to exceed expectations, but especially my own. 
you know, and I got big expectations. Well, I know you want to drop the music in the new year, right? You want to drop more music? Yes, sir. And the visuals. Because yes, you, you show me some songs and some videos already. Yeah. Are you, like, what, what are you most excited about? Are you excited to go play shows? Are you excited for the fans to hear it? Are you excited for people to watch? Um, excited. Well, I'm going I'm to wait a little second before I do shows, only because I enjoy to have, I, I want Mystique. That's me. I want Mystique. I want to, con- I want to contain it. You know, I want to present art. I want to like be on the radio. I want to be on everybody's like SoundCloud, everybody's like Spotify, Apple playlist. You feel me? And I want to make the dopest music videos that we've seen in a long time, mm. like since Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? And like, you know, I, my favorite Chris Brown videos are like the ones from like the very beginning. Like, you know, the ones that really like, goddamn, they was going crazy that usher confessions you know what i mean that, that michael jackson uh the way you make me feel thriller you know what i mean like i'm trying to be on that but in 2018 not trying to be i'm on that in 2019 you feel me i just got done creating something you heard travis paint the picture what we was doing in there i'm just working hard at it and i'm going hard and i'm gonna let the work speak for itself i ain't tell everybody i was gonna have the number one movie i wrote it down in my journal for real so you do do you do a lot of journaling because i just started doing that do it (laughs) continue my brother so yeah i started in in like 2015 like free journaling and stuff and then i stopped for a while because i felt like uh like that yeah i don't know i just like got busy and stuff and then the last couple months uh i've been i've been doing it a lot and then also it, it Dude, it helps when you write shit down, mm-hmm. like shit you you got to do, you want to do ideas because there's something about transferring a pen, you know, from, from like your mind to the pen to the pad. Right. There's something about that action that just like yep. locks it in, you know? Yep. It's crazy. You know, the thing about your music too is like you're so tapped in with legends and music, uh-huh. right? Like when, when I saw you at Comic-Con and we were hanging out, like you rolled up with RZA and, and Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Oh, where? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> do you remember that? I, do I remember that? Oh yeah. my God, that was the coolest night of my life, man. Word. <laughs> well, like, look, I met RZA in 2011 at uh, at Paramount Studios, which is just a road up here. Oh, where? Yeah, and he was just outside. He was like just chilling by the fire outside of the studio, and like I had the studio upstairs. And so when I opened the door, my shit was playing. And he was down there, and I walked out. I smoked cigarettes at the time, uh-huh. at the, back then. Uh-huh. You know, when I was a little shithead. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I stepped out, smoked a cigarette, thought I was tight. I wasn't. But uh, I got, you know, I got the head nod from RZA, and then He's you like, know bum, we bum, tried. Bum, yeah, peace, exactly, peace. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's uh, up, cat? And <laughs> exactly. And um, we chopped it up, and I mean, I just told him like how much Wu Tang. You know, like when I used to live in Riverside, and and I drive out to L.A. You know, all I would listen to was like just. Mm-hmm. Just the biggest Wu-Tang fan. My uncle, actually, I got to shout out my uncle because he was the one who got me in the Wu-Tang Clan. Word. Um, and, you know, yeah, they, it was cool to hang out with him. But then, like, getting to reconnect with him after, like, all of this time passed and it was you. And it was just, like, it was a crazy night. And I might have had a little, you know, I was, you know, yeah, yeah. I was having a good time. Yeah, yeah. We was all having a Everyone good time. Everyone has a good time at Comic-Con. Hey, for me, we was all having a good time. It was cool. I was, uh, I was there. I was uh, having... A great time with my cast and like from from dope from they get all down, of them were there from, yeah <laughs> it was like a, just like know. a merging of all of your worlds i mean and even past that i was meeting you know other cool people from other shows and like, well you were just, over chilling with uh, like the know, cast of riverdale we were all chilling yes i got to meet everybody and um uh yeah it was a couple other shows too. People I had seen and I'd been respecting. I was dancing with Kat Graham. We was killing it on the dance floor. I don't. Did you see that? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh yeah. She was getting busy with the kid. Yeah. Yeah. We was we was going crazy. Yo, it was wild. I'm telling you. You're not, you're not going to be able to go to Comic Con next year. It's going to be too crazy for you, bro. Oh, man, let's make a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. What are we talking about? You I know can't what I'm wait. They about to cut the check. What's it like hanging out um, with someone like RZA? Because I know you guys, I know you guys have a good a good relationship. Man, RZA's like, uh, I don't even want to call him unk. Uh, he's like just the big bro, but like the older big bro. Your OG, and the big, the OG. Yeah. He like the OG because he he's zen. Like he's the definition of somebody that can be faced with like some hardships. Does that keep falling? Yeah, it's a little, could be faced with some hardships, but um, um, you know he looks at it dead in the face and it's just over with. 
You feel me? He handles it right there. Mm. You know? When I'm on set, like, even the other day, because, you know, every director's enemy is time. You know, you have a day, you have a location, you have your budget, and you have the schedule, you know? And you're fighting time. You have to, Or you start getting into overtime and, you know, legal issues and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I was like, yo, all this shit that he was dealing with on set, you know what I mean? He handles it very professionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. He handles it very professionally. It's not even crazy shit. It's just like, you know, the shit that would like piss me off or make make it difficult, like throw me off mentally, like where it's distracting me from what I'm actually supposed to be doing, you know, or how I'm supposed to be feeling in the moment. Mm. He just swallows it. You know what I mean? He just handles it and it's like, you know, tough skin. Put it like that. You don't really pass this layer. It's like, boom, I heard you. I need some of that, bro. I'm going to handle it. I need some of that. Word. I, I, yeah, I get, I get I get overwhelmed easy. Word. You're pretty cool. I like to stay chill. You keep it chill. I like to stay chill. I need some more of that. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's very zen, man. I'm trying to be more like Rizzo in a lot of ways. For me. Yeah, I want to know how we can fix that for you. Oh, it's cool now. Okay. Look at that. Because I was like, mine's not... Doing that. Doing that. <laughs> and, uh... Cool. Ah! Watch this, bud. <laughs> see that? <laughs> no, yours is doing it, too. No, but you see how I slipped the bud in there? <laughs> I seen. Goddamn. You peeped. Yeah, I think your your cord was, uh, was doing that. Um, yeah, dude, I can't even imagine... Have you ever been in a scene and, like, something's taking you out of it? Mm. Not in the scene. Mm-mm. No, somebody took you out of a scene that you was in before. I don't mean like removed you from the scene. I mean like you're in, like right, like like like. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you like motherfucker. No one cuts my scenes. <laughs> Nobody cuts my scenes. <laughs> Fuck. No, I mean like yo, like have you ever like just been like. You know, like in this shit, right? And like some, I don't know. Like you said, like something happens on set. Something, so the light, the light fucking fucks up. Oh and like yeah, something man. Like I, that. Was, I be getting, like, man. I don't get upset like that, but you know, I be getting frustrated. Mm-hmm. You know, where I have to like step out and like. Yeah, like it. when that thing was falling, I was about to fucking sock that camera right there. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> yo, uh-huh. you know what? Cra- another crazy thing about you. Uh huh. You're an amazing boxer. Yeah. And that's one thing that we've really <laughs> bonded over is yeah. is fighting and like being fans of of fighting. Uh-huh. Um and you know someone that you need to that you need to look up is is this guy Brendan Schaub. Okay. Um so he was a UFC fighter. Uh he has uh a bunch of podcasts and he's like, you know, goes on goes on a bunch of them, but he's a really big fan of Spider-Man. Is he? And he took his son to go see your movie and he posted about it a bunch. Really? He's a really fucking cool dude. I've never got to meet him. I'm mm. a big fan of him. I want him to come on this podcast. Right. But um, I follow him on Instagram. And the other day, uh, yeah, he posted about like how good the movie was. That's fine. But yeah, and as a fan of fighting, you should yeah you should fuck yeah, with Brent Shop. Why not? He's like, he yeah. So he hosts now, um, and he's a stand up comedian, dude. What? Yeah, Is does he sets. Funny? Of, yes, does sets at the comedy store, and like, dude, he's he's fucking killing it. What? Yeah, he's dope. How did you get into boxing? Um. I was faced with a situation in Atlanta, and uh, yeah, I was like, basically, I had uh, some photographers out with me. I had a videographer, two photographers, and one of my homies. So it was two dudes and three girls or something, and one of the girls was dressed pretty like, it was cold, and she didn't really have on no clothes. Um, but she, you know, my it was a group of like people I was with, you know what I'm saying? And anyway, we were just faced with uh, some dude walking up to her and grabbing on her, and she like she was sticking up for her, you know. Well, here's the situation. Okay, <laughs> you know I just jumped to the fight already. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Here's the situation. She's like four nine, bro's like six two, you know. And at the time, I'm like, what? I'm five. I'm five nine right now. Five ten, whatever. Um, and while I know I can fight, you know what I'm saying? I know if I get in a fist fight. I'm a, you know, at the time, like, but I didn't know what was going on, like, what was really, I didn't know what I was really capable of, you feel me, I just knew I was going to hit you and it was going to hurt, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, neighborhood fights growing up, boom, 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 nothing crazy, nothing like, but right now this dude could have a gun, we in Atlanta, 
it's, it's, it's like homecoming weekend or whatever. It's like a lot of shit going on. Mad people trying to take photos with me or whatever. Like you got girls trying to talk to me. So by then, like like dope is out. Uh, the get down's out. Where, well, yeah, the get down was out. You feel me? So people trying to so talk. So people to know me. who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, really, I'm just like, yo, like, if I really have to get to it right now in front of all these people, like, I need to know exactly what I'm capable of doing. I don't want to go in there like, yeah, what's, you know what I'm saying? Hoping I'm not going to get hit first. It's just like people want to go into fights like that. I'm like, nah, like that uncertainty, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to remove. And so I, the next day I was boxing. I was like literally boxing the next day. Boom, 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 boom. And then getting better and better. Boom, 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 just like really like adding power to the shit my first thing was defense it was like the first thing i want to make sure is that if i don't want to get hit i'm not getting hit mm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're so <laughs> fast bro you're so fast because we set the bag up at my house right, like yeah. we really know we do <laughs> and like you're like you you'll come in you'll come in like fully like dressed right like we're about right. to go to dinner and shit <laughs> and you'll see that bag and like i'm almost ready and i'm like sprinkling i'm like all right ready and you're like yo is it cool if i pull this outside <laughs> I'm gonna pull this punching bag outside, all right? And I'm like, yeah. Do you want gloves? You're like, yeah. I'll take the gloves. Boom, 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 boom. What? People always surprised when they see my hands for sure. But that's what I'm saying. That I don't. I don't need to be walking around like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to be showcasing that I can get really upset or whatever. Like, why? And I grew up in a military like type of setting. You know, all boys military prep school. Like that's why you said the uniform yeah, earlier back exactly. in the yeah. Exactly. There, there's no, no, there's none of that. Get down. Give me twenty. Stay right there. I don't care. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? All that. Like, damn. You know, how long did you go there? Until I was in like fourth or fifth grade, and then I went to a Christian school until I was in like seventh grade, and then DESA in seventh grade. So you're doing push-ups in like third grade. Yeah, I, like I was like a wrestling champion in the state and shit. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I was a little boy. I mean, like this is little boyhood, childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up this way. So, this so is like, you could fight in the UFC if you really wanted to. If I, if I mean, I don't wrestle much. I do way more boxing and Muay Thai. You know, boom, 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 boom. You know, you got the elbows now. The elbows. You got the elbows. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Travis the Muay Thai, Muay Thai. No. I try, bro. I try. <laughs> I fucked myself up just fucking going too hard, you know. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. But, dude. Um, Shout out Ty- Tyron Willie. Tyron Willie. He was, I was going to say, he was in the video yeah. uh, the other night. He was in my music video. He's also in the movie Cutthroat City. So, did you guys meet on set of the movie? We did. We met on set of the movie. Um, and he and was that just, movie is directed by the RZA. RZA. Yeah. See, it all comes back. Yeah. It all comes back. Yeah. yeah. What was meeting Tyrone like? It was. I didn't know who he was to be honest with you. Um, my, my boy um, that I was training with, he was like, "Yo, this Tyrone Woodley. You know who that is?" And I was like, "Nah." He was like, "Yo, this man is crazy with this shit." He was like, "Nah, for real. You should be like, you should be learning from him." And I was like, "Okay, cool." You know. And then I met him and I talked to him and I showed him my stance, like where I was at with the boxing and whatever. He was like, "Yo, no, you got a good and you fast and like he no, was." Bro, like, you're fast. Yeah, he was telling me like, "Nah, like you." You, you know, you really got it. And then, uh, you know, it was building up my confidence with the, you know what I'm saying? Everything I was talking about, why I started boxing, I wanted to protect. I wanted to be able to protect my friend, you know what I'm saying? Like, confidently, not just going in there, like, just on some reckless me versus you. Yo. Oh, it's a bra. Who who knows who's gonna win? You know what I'm saying? I, I want to take that chance. Strategy, out. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to yeah. take out the chance of you being able to win, you know? So, anyway. <laughs> wow, well, one that's admirable, right? right? How often do you train? Okay, as of right now, I haven't trained in like two months, to be honest. Um, but you've been doing promo for the movie. You've I've been, been doing promo, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when you're home. But when I'm home and back to it, I'm about to start training with this new cat, Tyrone, put me on. And then, you know, me and Tyrone. Oh, damn. So kidding. are you about to start doing MMA stuff or, or just stri- or boxing? Um, I want to take one thing at a time, boxing and kickboxing, then really go in with the Muay Thai. And then, like, you know, do the, uh, what's the grappling stuff? The uh, Jiu-jitsu? Jiu-jitsu. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, start learning other styles, like, from there. Yeah. But take the time to really master things. Like, I need to be, well, I have been boxing professional boxers. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know. What's but, that? What's, what's stepping in a ring with a professional boxer like? Getting hit a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 
Cause also, I spar, but I've you know I've never sparred with like a UFC fighter. No, you seen how hard I hit though. Yes, that's, that's why. <laughs> and are you hitting that hard and while you spar? I mean, not not as hard as I can, you know, but I'm hitting harder than I can hit. Like, did you watch the Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight? Yeah, I did. What did you think? Um, I mean, respectfully, you know, Tyson Fury did very good. Like he he did better than I hoped that he would do, to be honest. Um. And, you know, Wilder, he knocked him down that one time. I was rooting for Wilder, personally. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, that's just me. I was rooting for Wilder. Dude, that was a hard fight, man, because, like, I'm a fan of both of them, right? right? And I was a bigger Wilder fan going into it. But when I, like, when I, like, all of the press that Fury started doing and, like, hearing his story yeah. and, like, what he was fighting for and, like, it made you, it made you want to see him do that you know what i mean because of like you know how he lost his belt and then the drugs and the alcohol and the depression and like you know like you know just all of the bullshit that he had to get out of yeah. um i had to watch that fight on my iphone so like it, <laughs> and i was like i was deep in i, I don't know i didn't have service so i had to keep like refreshing it and i would mm -hmm. see like glimpses mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then um I remember like I was texting my homie and I was like, it, it was like the 12th round and it was right before Fury got knocked down and my homie, uh, it, the service cut out, like mm -hmm. I couldn't watch the video and so I, I like texted my homie and I was like, yo, what happened? And he's like, Wilder won. And then like I, I refreshed it a couple of minutes he later, <laughs> draw. <laughs> and I called him and I was like, yo, what the, what the fuck? I was like, yo, what the fuck? He's like, dude. He came from the He's dead. He's like, dude, <laughs> you miss everything. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. No, I, I mean, yeah. T if you ask me, if we in the street fight, you know what I'm saying, and I knock down somebody, you know what I mean, you, you, you lost. You know, you're on the ground. But, and then when it happens twice, I mean, you know what I mean? Even if you get back up, though. You still lost that fight. You didn't knock me down. You might have tagged me. Doo -doo. Uh, uh. Ooh, you got me. Uh, uh, uh. But when I got you, boo, 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 you was on the flow. And then you got back up and I gave you some more, ho. You feel me? <laughs> I'm on Wilder. I'm sorry. Like, you know. It was a crazy, I mean, yo, it was, it was a crazy fight. And you know what's, di you know what's tight is that they're going to do it again. <laughs> you know there's going to be a rematch. They're already yeah. setting it up. Yeah. He just did, uh, he did Joe Rogan's podcast and they're talking about like, uh, April, right? So, I get, but I have my respect for Fury, though. Don't get me. I'm just talking, you know, as a as a boxing fan. Bro, yeah, you know? no, it's, talking as fans. You feel me? Talking like, that's as fans. All. You seen Ryan Garcia's fight? No, but you know, I played paintball with him. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's really good friends with my homie Emilio, and my homie Emilio is a really dope photographer, and he goes and photographs all of his fights. Oh, word. I mean, yeah, kid's I, crazy. I mean, yeah, you, I I want to be like able to like train with bruh. Mm. You feel me? That's really what I don't know. Like was in Javante Davis. Oh my God! And I can be like a real, like for real, real sparring partner, like real deal behind the scenes with them, like to help them for a fight. He's nasty, bro. Oh yeah, but I, I follow him on Instagram. I want to be able to help them, type shit. Yeah, I, I want to be that good. <laughs> oh shit, you want to? Okay, like I want to, like you know, we sparring before his fight to make sure he's winning the fight, type shit, like. You know what I mean? You want to be one of the dudes that they call in to, to spar to be like, like yo, yeah, yo, yeah. me, come through. I need some hands. You feel me? Let me give you some work. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want that. Like, with some boxers. You feel me? Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I want none of that. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. I'll stick to ADHD on my podcast. If any fighters want to come on here, I can uh, help you talk about the fight. I can help <laughs> you talk about what went down at the fight. No, uh, yeah. I like, I'm behind the scene. Like, that's a part of my, like, I definitely see me being like 32 training like with like fucking like just yeah the best in the world just you know would you ever do a celebrity boxing match yeah yeah I mean bro like I'm I'm a boxer <laughs> yeah I would do it and it's crazy to see like what you know what Logan and uh that dude KSI did with the YouTube shit yeah but uh, see that's what, like I would I would have <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I mean you know <laughs> Man, <laughs> <laughs> how much you weigh? I'm I'm actually 145 right now, 150. Yeah, I thought I was 130, but I'm gaining weight. You gaining weight? It's too much rosé, bro. 
I mean, no, I'm gaining weight. It's the pasta and the rosé. Yeah. It's just a every night now. It's just a every yeah. night. <laughs> I was hoping I was 130, though, because Javante fighting, what, 130? Yeah, he fighting 130 right now. But he could be 145. He could be whatever way he want to be, it looked like. And then Ryan Garcia fighting 130. The crazy thing for me that I, well, I could never do the weight cuts and shit. Have you ever done a gnarly weight cut like that? Nah, I mean, I never, I'm never concerned about my weight. Yeah, so. <laughs> I never, yeah, yeah, I'm never, you know, I, uh, I'm not, I was doing the keto diet for a long time. I'm not doing that anymore, but I lost 12 pounds in like a week and a half. What? Yeah, all but like body fat. What? Mm-hmm. That's good. I was eating nothing but like literally eggs and bacon and cheese. And you stuck to it? Oh yeah, for months. What? Months and months and months. It's just, it's really hard. It's really hard to like go out with your friends and. Um, like you know, go to din- like you know my girl and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, and then when I went to Italy for Fashion Week, I was like, "Fuck that! I'm not gonna go to Italy and not eat pasta." <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna go to Italy. No, how are you gonna go to Italy and not eat pasta? I feel like when I went to Italy and I ate pasta, the restaurant I went to disappointed me. What? Yeah, you didn't have good pasta in Italy. No, I ate the same thing every day for four days. But food tastes different overseas. And I think, you know, I had to better. adjust to the Better. Like in London, bro? Okay, no, no, no. Okay. Sorry to anyone in London that's listening to this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, but they know. I mean, any, anybody from London that's been to America, you know what I'm saying? They know food. We, we have bigger portions, you know. It just tastes different over here. You know, <laughs> Yo, take me to South America. I'll eat there every day, bro. That's my favorite place to go. Brazil, uh, Argentina, Chile. I'll go eat there every day. Where? I've eaten some weird shit over there. Though. I've never been to South America. Let's go. Brazil. Maybe I should go there for, for uh, my first vacation. Let's that go. Sounds, you, bro, don't play. Bro, I'm about to go to Brazil, bro. What let's you go, mean? bro. Let's go. Watch. If you watch this YouTube video, if you make it this far, all comments under there are going to come to Brazil. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> bro, I'm dead ass going to Brazil. I just picked a place. Okay, but are you going to go to Sao Paulo or Rio? I don't know which one's better. Um, I I don't know. I can't choose. They're both beautiful. I've spent more time in Sao Paulo. Clear waters, massages every day. Rio is like the beach. That's like where I went to the beach parties. Um, oh yeah, dude. They be dancing. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. You know what's tight about South America too? What's that? Music doesn't go out of style. You'll go to a nightclub and like you know in L.A. like. You're you're hearing what the, what's on the radio. Uh-huh. You go to a nightclub there, and they're playing like Fifty Cent Candy Shop from like two thousand. Th- yes, shop. bro. Because it's still <laughs> let you like the lollipop. What? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> we, do, we, do. we we're just gonna pretend like he didn't mess up the words from Candy. I shop. don't remember, I, dude. Come on, it's been it's been, it's been fourteen years. <laughs> hey, shout out to Brazil, South America for keeping it in tune. Then you know. <laughs> uh, while we wrap this up, I do got to shout out uh, a couple people that retweeted last week's video. So if you did, thank you so much. I want to shout out Dan the Chatterbox at Chatty Man Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, at Lindsay HH7 and Daniela Gray, Danielle 9510571212. And Sam, my guy, at Ear Punched. I don't know how you got that Twitter handle, but it's really dope. Um, Boom. Appreciate you retweeting last week's video. If you guys made it this far, thank you. Shameek Moore, <laughs> Spider Man, in Spider-Man, into the Spider Verse. The Spider-verse. Yo, I got a question. Are you listening to Sunflower like on repeat? Uh, you know, yeah, it's on the radio. It's, it's insane. It's, you know, yeah. I hear that song Shout like literally out to every Post five Malone, minutes. Sway Lee. Yeah, you feel me? Um, music coming twenty nineteen. Music coming 2019. Get ready for that worth the risk. Get ready for that bounce. Get ready for that tongue in play. You feel me? Get ready for that. Know your worth. We're about to take over. I'm really, I'm letting the work speak for itself. I gave you dope. I gave you the get down. I'm giving you Spider Man. I'm about to give you Cutthroat City. When does that come out? Next year sometime. Mm. But, um, and I'm giving you this music and like, I'm, I'm really passionate about it. Like, I've been waiting on this moment since I was like 12 years old. Like, if y'all think y'all getting in with my acting, wait till you get it with my music, you feel me? But here we go, 2019. I can't wait to see the video for Tongue and Play, man. It looked dope. I just, I felt severely underdressed. 
<laughs> yeah, and I was but very, very uncoordinated. Wardrobe. I was very uncoordinated that we night. We had wardrobe. We had a Everyone suit Everyone was him. like, who the fuck is this kid? The guy came up. He's like, what's up, bud? <laughs> what up, dog? What up, dog? What up? Um, all right. Peace out.